we should have a human-centered AI uh, developed in Europe. The European Parliament plans to regulate artificial intelligence with the intention to ensure that this technology helps us for the better and keeps us safe from the worse. In a nutshell, what are the main points of the AI Act and what does it mean that it is a risk-based regulation? It's law that can be enforced, that can uh, defend uh, the interests uh, and the rights of citizens in a, in a higher level, for sure. Uh, the core of this legislation, the idea behind it, is the fact that we should have a um, human-centered AI uh, developed in Europe, that we should uh, um, defend our values, our uh, um, uh, model, and also build a, a dialogue with the rest of the world around how we can make AI compatible with democracy, supportive of um, emancipation of, uh, of people, of uh, giving more opportunities and not uh, uh, instead uh, uh, create more uh, fractures or uh, fuel disinformation or uh, 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 create a control state. What exactly falls under the category of AI? So AI, in, in the view of, of the parliament, is to recognize the fact that an AI has to work with a certain degree of autonomy. And in the content that it generates, uh, it has to be able to influence or capable of influencing uh, either virtual or physical environments. And that is the key element that differentiates AI from other type of, of software. So whether we look at um, applications that are in the prohibition list or applications that are in, in high risk, uh, we have to first make sure and differentiate and make sure that it is indeed AI and that it comes indeed under the scope of the regulation before we determine whether it is one of those applications that would be prohibited or not. Can you just uh know that something falls under the AI regulation by seeing how it works, like uh, measuring this autonomy part. Companies will self-assess and they will self-assess on the basis of the definitions that are in the text and the criteria that are in the text. And it is mm -hmm. then if their determination is that they are in the category of high risk, then there are obligations that have to do with transparency and indeed with explainability, which means that they will have to explain what kind of data they use to train the algorithm, what kind of instructions uh, did they give to the, uh, to the algorithm, so on and so forth. We don't ask them to disclose the code itself, because that might even be protected mm. uh, by law. Will there be an office that would uh, be um, where one could report possible infringements if, let's say, a company doesn't do self-assessment in the way they should do it? The issue of flexibility of this legislation has always been at the core of our attention. As you mentioned uh, earlier, the fact that we focus on use cases, uh, it's important uh, rather than just on the technology itself, because this will make this legislation more durable and less uh, at risk of uh, obsolescence. But at the same time, we um, have uh, uh, foreseen various degrees of uh, facilitation for the modification of the areas that are under the um, uh, high-risk uh, uh, um, classification.